Welcome to VMware's ThinApp Bootcamp Series. In this section, we'll be talking about the fundamentals of using application link. We will discuss application linking, define some use case examples, discuss the importance of the import order, then show you a short demonstration of AppLink. VMware ThinApp is an application virtualization solution that requires no local software. We take everything that makes up the application, its file system and registry, and abstract that into a single self-contained executable. Using more than one thin app to virtualize components of an application like .NET or Java will allow you to dynamically assemble the use of your applications at runtime. AppLink is a very simple way of defining how applications can communicate with each other. Applications can seamlessly be integrated by merely pointing the primary application to look in a particular folder or folders for the dependency that it requires. The interoperability between thin apps also means that more than one primary application can use a single dependent thin app. This reduces the amount of physical disk space required to deploy an application because you wouldn't have to deploy the dependency within the primary application more than once. When we look at the way the application actually interacts with the dependent thin apps, we see that the file system, registry keys, services, com objects, and even environment variables of the dependent package are simply made visible to the primary. In the example shown, we illustrate how the primary application or the base application, as well as the app link application or component package, can seamlessly provide to the primary a single pane of glass that shows both the virtual file system and registry and objects of the primary app as well as the dependent applications. Several potential use cases for this specifically fall in the lines of things like dependencies for requirements to a primary app, .NETs, Javas, ODBC drivers, even configuration files can be used as app links to a primary application. In this example, we show how the primary application, the SAP GUI, uses an app link to a thin app of the .NET dependency in order to provide a single use case for an application with its dependency. Like most applications, the thin app can use what is required on the base operating system, like, th like .NET, but if a conflict occurs or the user wishes to maintain some sort of compatibility requirement, using that requirement as a separate dependent thin app to the primary is highly desirable. Add-on components and plugins can also be treated as separate thin apps. You can take a primary application like a web browser and then by using AppLink tie it to specific dependencies or plugins that the primary needs. In the sample shown, our Firefox application may have a dependency on a particular version of the Adobe Flash Player. This is a primary use of ThinApp in this scenario. Not only can components and plugins be used, but also different versions of those can be dynamically assembled based on the use case. The final use case that we can discuss deals with hot fixes and service packs. As applications are remediated, it isn't, necessarily to re isn't necessary to recapture the entire application, but you could capture just the service pack or hotfix that the primary application is needing. By using AppLink, we can then dynamically tie the primary base application to whatever service pack or hotfix that it requires. This allows us to provide a targeted version of our applications to our users without the worry of the particular service pack or hotfix requirement that they may need. Another way of providing application linking is with a nested approach. By using the nested approach, we can provide more than one thin app as the app link dependency to our primary application. 
This allows us to build upon each one of these files in a layered approach. Application A, B, and C could all contain unique files or registry values that the primary needs, while at the same time providing resolution to any conflicts in those files or registry values that may exist. This allows us to build upon an iterative deployment if the dependency of a particular file, let's say app C in this case, requires the presence of things from app A and app B in order to function. The way that we handle the nested application conflict resolution is through the import order. Simply put, a thin app will look in the location defined by the package for any dependent package it requires. If more than one exists, then the primary looks at the names of the files in alphanumeric order to determine which is the lowest and which is the highest. By using this import order, we are able to determine if a conflict exists between two applications, say app A and app B as defined by the import order 2 and 3, we know that the conflict of the highest alphanumeric file would be the one that wins. We also know that any unique files that may exist in app uh, executable A would also be visible. It's important to understand how the nested import order works in order to determine how best to deploy the use of AppLink within your environment. Also, whether you're using required AppLinks or optional AppLinks as your parameter, the import order remains the same. In this demonstration, we will look at an application built with ThinApp and use application link to update the application itself. We have a copy of the Microsoft Office Word Viewer 2003 in a thin app. If we open up a document that was written in 2003 or the DOC extension, we can see that the application interacts with the document just fine. If we try to open up a document that was written in a later standard, like 2007, we can see that this copy of the Word Viewer is unable to recognize that format, therefore cannot open up the document. Using application link, we can update this copy of a thin app by taking the plugin requirement or patch from Microsoft and making it available to our primary application. In this instance, I've told the primary application to look in a folder directly next to itself called plugins. Keep in mind that AppLink can be directed to look in any folder in any location and can look in multiple folders if necessary. By having the patch as a thin app available now in the plugins folder, we can go back into our primary application and perform our test again. If we go back to the folder with our document, we can see that the O3 document opens just as expected. And if we attempt to open the O7 document at this point, we can see that not only is it going to open, but we also notice that we have an association with the icon within the thin app. That lets us know that the application itself is in fact slipstreamed with the app link and is now able to interface this particular document. Conversely, we can disable these types of functions by simply making the thin app that we're using to app link to unavailable. As a demonstration, I will simply rename the app linked application and go back into our primary. Again, we can see that the normal use of the application works. And if we attempt to open up the 07 document again, we can see that we have reverted back to the normal state of the thin app itself. In our next example, we use an app linked application, which is nothing more than a simple file management utility to show how the importing of multiple app linked files affects the primary application. In this case, you can see that I have the thin app application running and I'm looking at a folder with a file contained called app link test. If we open up the file, you can see that we simply have it listed as A. This is the exact same file that exists on the underlying host operating system. Inside our app link folder where we have our plugins, we'll simply rename the file in order to apply the app link. You'll notice that in this case, 
instead of using the .exe extension, I've chosen to rename the file to .applink and instructed my primary application to look at files in this folder with that extension. By doing so, I'm able to assign this particular thin app for this purpose without confusing the user that this may be an application that he or she could interface directly with. If we go back to our ThinApt application, we can see the effects of applying this first AppLink file to the primary application. We can see that the AppLink test file still exists, but when opened, we can see that it is now listed as B, showing us that the file is contained within the AppLink uh, ThinApp that we have connected to. So let's go back into our plugin folder and activate our second AppLink file. Again, simply renaming the file to the appropriate extension and being in the folder that the primary knows where to look, these two files will now be made available to this primary application. We can see that the primary file itself, AppLink test, still appears, but is now listed as C, showing that this AppLink test2 contains the exact same file that was in AppLink test1 that is also what is originally on the host operating system. We have now updated this application file two times. We can now also see that we have a unique file contained in AppLink test2 that is also showing up within our primary application. This demonstrates that we can not only update the primary file on the host operating system, but also can provide unique files to the primary application. We will now go ahead and activate our third test AppLink file and show the effects of three files now updating against the primary. We can see that we still have our primary AppLink test file, which is now listed as D showing that the third test app link is updated that primary file on the host operating system. We can also see that the unique file that was present in AppLink test 2 is still available in addition to a unique file in AppLink test 3. We use the AppLink files and build upon the files contained therein so that any uniqueness will persist to the primary application and only those files that have collisions will the last imported AppLink file actually win. In this case, the AppLink test file, which was the primary one on the host we started with, has been updated to the one in three, but yet we have preserved the uniqueness of two in addition to that. We can actually control the unique value proposition knowing that any collisions are going to be presented in our highest listed app link alphanumerically. So what we can do is go back into our app link files and simply remove by renaming the file any of the app links that we have been building upon. By doing so we can see that we're still able to maintain the persistence of the file that we wanted to update which was the app link test file to show D which was based on the third app link but we can also see that the uniqueness of file 2 is no longer available. This allows you to build dynamically your applications with patches, updates, and configurations as you see fit merely by controlling the naming value of the files which you're applying to.